cover some of the material if you read chapter one. Uh, it will strike a joke if you read chapter one. Most of this stuff is statics. And again, just as a reminder, as I mentioned, about the syllabus, about these lectures. So I'm not going to really focus on those problems. I'm more going to focus on the information, lecture type of stuff that I talk to you and observe the problems. But we have two ways. So what I want to talk about in this class is um, equations. This is one. Where do we put this sign? Right here. Right here. Just give us a little slot. Okay. So we're going to talk about uh, equilibrium equations. These are the most common uh, used thing. This class, and when we talk about the equation of equations of equilibrium, we'll talk about them in vector form and scalar form. Vector form is sort of three D form, and scalar is stuff that you can simplify the problem to two D or one D. We'll talk about computing uh, moments, moment vectors. And then something that's really important and hopefully doesn't get into too much, although you should have seen um, a good deal of this in statics, is the discussion of free body diagrams, right? So free body diagrams are, I, I, if you have the ability to be comfortable writing equations of equilibrium, also comfortable drawing correct, clear, by diagrams, you have a much easier time doing this. You struggle with this, I guarantee you it will only hurt you in this class where you cannot emphasize enough equations of equilibrium to be able to draw correct free body diagrams. We'll talk about what's correct free body diagrams. Okay? Alright, so this is a class that's based on statics. Are not in motion, or they're moving so slowly that we can scoop them into a so when we talk about equilibrium. This is the situation when the acceleration is in minutes. Okay? So very often this is going to be situations where velocity. Body is not moving at all. It's fixed. But that's not the only situation. It's also a situation where the velocity is constant. Okay? And we'll see situations like this when we get into original problems and rotary motion. So it's a shaft that's rotating by a torque. Does that, right? But the actual the body is rotating with a constant and we're switching the velocity. So the velocity is constant. That's still equilibrium. So both these situations are equilibrium. Okay. So um, first let me do the vector uh, equations of equilibrium. So we have some body. Forces applied on it. There's pulling forces. There are also distributed loads. Now, statics, which you can also consider an equivalent point load from a distributed load. Right? And there might also be some moments that are. I will draw moment vectors in two hours, okay? So we'll do our chain. Oops. This is all the lines in the coordinate system, x, y, and z. Oops. And the equilibrium equations are two vector equations. First one is vector sum of forces, is equal to zero. Second, Wiggle under here to give up that it's a vector. Now that implies three scalar equations. Sum of forces in the x equals zero, sum of forces in the y direction equals zero, and sum of 
you just make a couple points. I'm a little stickler on notation. I think notation makes what is problems to fall apart. So you notice like the rules of notation are kind of just it's projected and I can put the rule under it. Um, another thing to remember is when we talk about some moments they have to be with respect to words. So you have to take some moments. Any point in the body. But if you try to do again the sum of forces around another point, this set of equations is linearly dependent on the other set of equations. So it gives you no independence. So this once you do sum of moments. So proper substitution. So these are vector equations. Um, so in 3D, they're kind of nice. A lot of problems we'll do in this class are two-dimensional problems or one-dimensional problems. We we'll talk about those, but let's talk about 3D first because we've actually seen this stuff in status as well. So a real simple example is let's say. Event X2 radius. It's just a solid 2 radius. It's fixed to a wall at one end. We call this point A. Let's give it coordinate system. So let's call this the X direction. Let's give it Y direction. Let's give it Z direction. Maybe there's a force in Y. Let's find the action forces at A that make this body move. So I say satisfy. I mean, what we're doing here is obviously this body is fixed, so it's it's not accelerating. So the reaction forces find A because they have to find A. So I mean, it's not really like an abstract concept of like satisfying the rhythm. I mean, that, that, that's the tool that we use to find the reaction force. Now, this is not a free body diagram. So let me digress a little bit and be a little excited about free body diagrams. That's not a free body diagram. I see a lot of times students doing these things on the exams about problems that are collected. And it's problematic. Uh, often gets them to a point where they get the wrong answer. I'm being partial credit that the free body diagram is incorrect. Why is this one incorrect? This one's incorrect because I'm not showing all the forces of the body. I am showing constraints here. I'm showing the constraint here that's fixed. It's not a free body diagram. And then by just putting some force arrows here, it doesn't work either. Right? So you have to redraw the body. With externally applied forces. But also the reaction forces. Now, in this case, we have some reaction forces at A that are unknown. There's some force vector at A, and there's also some moment vector. Right? 
now drawn was red. Those are actual vectors. Okay. This force here, I could draw it right as a vector. Well, technically, if I want to write this as a vector, I should. Not right in this paper. I should write it as 100 pounds acting in minus k direction, where k is the unit vector. Probably used to say that. So this is kind of had on the top. Okay. Now that's a proper vector. You see, as the direction associated with it. Okay. Now you don't always have to do that. We'll talk about two D summations a little bit later on. But for now, technically, if you really need to have three D problems, that would be that's consistent. Now, what makes this a free body diagram is on the reaction forces. Okay? Another way you could do it, this would also be acceptable. If I drew it like this, and I just put the scalar values, this is also acceptable. I don't have the minus k vector on here, but the direction is noted by the fact that we have the vector in here. Now, force has X, Y, and Z component. Right? So I'll consider FA and breaking it up into its X, Y, and Z components. So I have F, A, X direction, F, A, Y direction, F, A, Z direction. Likewise, the moments will also have X, Y, and Z. Also have moment at A, X direction, moment at A, Y direction, Z direction. Okay. So this is showing the scalar components. This is writing the vector components. Now, for 3D problems, I actually find this approach easier than to 2D problems or 1D problems. It's, it's probably easier just to write the scalar components. You can do whichever you feel like. If you get really comfortable with this, you can always do this. This will always be okay. But it'll work. Right? Uh, these are both correct free body diagrams. Okay? That's fine. This is incorrect. Okay? Here I've clearly labeled all the forces acting on this body. I have the external force, and I have the reaction forces from the constraint. Either I've drawn them as vectors or as the scalar components. Way this one. The other thing to note uh, is that, uh, well, variable units, right? So there's like units in here, well, it's two And uh, the other thing that's important is assuming direction, right? So a lot of times students worry about which way should the reaction in fact, it does not matter, right? For simple problems, you can figure it out. Uh, more complex problems, you might be able to. Uh, there are statically determined problems, which we'll talk about this class, where you will not be able to figure out the direction. And what I'm saying now is it does you no good to worry about which way the reaction force goes when you're drawing the diagram. It's just a waste of time. Uh, it all comes out of the washing. What I recommend, what I do, as you can see, I've drawn the components in the positive x, y, and z direction. So for all external reaction forces, I recommend that you draw them in a positive sense. You don't have to, as long as you're consistent, they'll work out. Uh, so I think so don't waste your time trying to worry about which way they should go. It's just a class where you can Should it go the other way? It doesn't matter. If it goes the other way, you solve for the values and you find the sign that you can tell. Okay? So you don't have to worry about it. Right? It's just something else to compare to. But but these are both appropriate. Okay? Let's look at this one now. Now this one I drew as a vector. We don't really know the origin of any or direction, so I just kind of drew it in arbitrary directions, right? 
So let's look at this approach, okay? Let me approach it first. So in this situation, um, let's do uh, equivalent images. So we have first one, vector, sum of forces, so when we do this approach, we have to make sure to write all the forces as vectors. Okay? So what are the sum of the forces we have? Well, we have Fa. We don't know anything about that other than the fact that it has some active interaction. The other thing we have is this force. Minus This is a proper vector. Don't put the K here if it's a threat. This goes to C. Okay? So writing something like this. This is incorrect. It's meaningless because this is a scalar, this is a scalar, and this is a vector. You can't add a scalar to a vector. Okay? You have to make sure you have other vectors in here. Zero, it's not a scalar zero, it's a vector zero. Alright, so now for this one, the answer is right here. It's quite true. Let's take this and solve for FA and see what FA simply means 100 pounds in K direction. So it has no I component and no J. So it only has the quantities, the directions on the bounds. Probably could have gotten that by inspection. Now what about sum of moments? So to do the sum of moments, all right. Now remember, when we do the moments, they have to be with respect to a point. statics. So if we have some points O, and then force vector. Now force vectors are what we call like bound vectors, right? They're applied at some other point. Physically they're applied at a point. Okay? That's what it's applied at. So I. Okay? Now if we draw a vector Supply. This we'll call R. Okay. That's R from O to the point of application of F. Can't go the other way, but it has to go from O to the point of application. Now, moment F about point O to the point of F is equal to R cross F. Okay? That's the point of F. This does not need to be a right angle. This can be any angle. Okay? It doesn't have to be a right angle. Okay. Uh, cross product takes an income on S. Sorry, no. So with that, let's do some moments about point A. This problem. Okay? Some moments about point So, what do we have? Well, we have at point A, I have the reaction over the FA. That I don't know. That fact we don't know. Now, this force here is applied at point A. So, its reaction on zero. Obviously, we have to do zero to the 
then we have this value. All right. So vector that we draw to go from A to the point of application of this force that's in here is R. And that's going to be Ten inches in the y direction, and then eighteen inches. Ten inches in the y direction, plus eighteen inches in the g direction. Remember, I have units. Okay, so that's actually that function right here. So the moment that we developed from this force. Now again, we can solve for MA. And then it's just simply going to be equal. Let's bring this to the other side, which is the right hand side. So this minus here, I have to equal positive. So this is just going to be 10 inches I plus 18 inches J plus 0.9 pounds. Remember, in order the cross product matters. R cross F. Pull a negative one scale out. All right. So now, when we do the cross product, okay, we take uh, it's basically like the product rule for components. Okay. So we cross this with this, and then we add to it the cross of this. this okay. So the first component is ten inches times. I plus K minus J. I plus K all the way through minus J. And now we have the term that comes from the 18 plus from this term. So that's plus 18. J plus K. J plus K is a positive. So that's our vector, right? That's our result. So MA has two components. It's got 1800 pound inches in the I direction minus 1000. So if you're actually label this on a three by diagram, you know, one hundred pounds down. Go with the force. J component. So the minus J component is going in this direction. Thousands. You still have to draw a double arrow here. Okay? It's a little bit complicated. Okay? Okay, that would complicate it some more. Okay. That's using a 3D approach. Now, uh, if you look at this, a lot of times, also have simpler 2D types of problems. The picture gets drawn as follows.
20 pounds and a half. Well, this is the x direction. This is the y direction. This is fixed here. So again, it's not a property. So again, find the reaction forces at point A. Now, this is a simplified problem. A lot of the problems we see in this class are kind of like this. This is basically a two-dimensional problem. On these, very often, it's simpler to instead of solving vector equations, to note that this only occurs in the xy plane. So some of forces in x, y, zero, and then some moments about the z-axis. That's the moment that we're going to look at. So that's what gives us a positive moment sense, right? Because that's the z-axis coming out here. Okay. So what this is basically saying is that if you were to look at some of forces in the z direction, which is what we're missing. It's truly zero because there are no external forces in this direction. Likewise, there's nothing that gives you a moment about the x or y, y axis. That's what you're looking at. Okay? There's, you basically get like zero, all these equations are zero plus zero. You could write this. You know, so you can solve this in a three-dimensional manner. We usually do this in two. So this implies this reduced set of scalar equations. Really just three equations as opposed to six scalar equations. Like I said, it's just three dimensional equations. When we do uh, vector sum of forces, that's a single vector equation. That implies, each one of those implies three scalar equations, right? Three scalar equations, three scalar equations. Equilibrium is two vector equations or six scalar equations. Now, in this situation, what I'm saying is three of those scalar equations are trivial. So of course, you can see, so the moment's about the x axis. Again, this is not a free body diagram. So we can draw it. We can draw the free body diagram. As follows. Again, we have 100 pound force here. 120 pound back there. And then we're going to have some. Reaction forces, x, y direction at point A. Now again, we can look at this, and obviously this is going to go to zero. And this is acting in this direction. But I, I'm just drawing them in general. Uh, I'm drawing them in a positive x and y direction. Just to keep them consistent. If that's not the correct direction, I'm going to sign change them. And then, since it's built in, it's fixed, it's not just simply pin, there's also moments. So I have one, two, three scalar unknowns for the use of the right? Let's solve it. So the sum of forces in the x direction, zero, that gives me just an F. Okay, x is equal to zero, which Kind of do my inspection. Sum of forces in the y direction equal to zero. That gives me F AY minus 120 pounds and 50 minutes. Zero, or in other words, F Y is equal to 120 pounds. And finally, sum of moments equals zero. Okay, now we have to pick a point. So let's pick this point, right? It doesn't matter which point you pick, pick 
this point, this point, at any point you want, at one point in your summer moments. Now, I chose A because what's it going to do? It's going to eliminate the moment between the F A X and F A Y. So no one can work with this. No one's going to moment to the first year. So it makes my equations go this thing. So this gives me M A. I've drawn that in the positive direction. Now this produces a negative moment. Is it negative? Negative 120 pounds. Now its moment on is 24 inches. I don't drop the units. This is zero. So this tells me that M A is now equal to 120 times 24. situation when you're doing these moments, you know, when you do the scale ones very often, you get its moment arm. You multiply by now in this situation, you do have to pick the moment arm that is perpendicular. Okay? So it's this distance. It's perpendicular to the line of force. Okay? If you have force at some Angle, there's two ways you can do this. One is technically this distance, this is 24 pounds. We got this distance is 5 inches. And this moment would be 500 pound inches. This is the moment of the perpendicular to the line of Typically, what you would do. So this would be 60 pounds, that's 40 pounds, that would be, right? Right, so that's 60, 40. And so this one has moment on zero. This one has a moment on this distance. But make sure you get the perpendicular distance, right? When you do the scalar solutions. And you can get the same thing by doing the moment of the points. F. So that's uh, the equilibrium equations. Um, all right. Sum of forces and sum of moments, they can be a vector or scalar form. When you're doing 2D or 1D, probably the scalar form is easier. If you're doing 3D problems, I tend to prefer the 3D form, but you can do the 2D scalar approach with the 3D scalar equations with each. I find that a little more difficult. Uh, if you do the vector approach, the 3D vector approach, be careful about keeping the unit vectors, making sure you're not getting the scalars and vectors, and make sure. Also, again, I'll emphasize this in other talks. Free body diagrams, free body diagrams. Make sure you spend time carefully and clearly drawing free body diagrams. I'll say this for a public people here. When you do an exam, please be especially about free body diagrams and a 
especially about the basic equations. Right? We need to really, you know, if we're doing this problem, if we really draw the three line diagram, we need to write at least the first line of the set of forces and the sum of lines. When you go through, you hash the algebra. Relax with that stuff. But what's most important that I see that you clearly have done this and done this thing. The rest of it's out. Free by diagram.